Have you been blessed through the series on faith that we've been talking about? Okay. All right, so we will finish up on that this morning. Um, in the next two services, so I think this is part um, part six. We continued on on Thursday about conversations of faith. Then I explained something about the manifestation. Something is wrong with this microphone. So I was talking about um, manifestation of of things in the spirit. That so we look at the scripture. We looked at a scripture that says that when things want to get manifested in our lives, what happens is that when you plant a seed into the ground, as a farmer, what you're expecting to see immediately is that if you put a seed of a corn into the ground, you're expecting to see a corn germinate for you immediately. So when you see, when you plant a seed as a farmer, and you see the seed of the corn begin to germinate for you, you are encouraged. You, when you see improvement, there's an encouragement that comes to you. You are excited. You are happy that what I put my effort into is making a lot of sense for me. Then if you plant a seed into the ground and you are not encouraged and you are not seeing um, certain things come up to encourage you and the things are not growing, then you will likely get yourself a bit... Um, a feedback that says that this thing is not working or this thing is not producing for you as the case may be and what is happening there is very simple that when you are walking in faith you will not walk with sight which means that there would be no encouragement there will be no improvement even while you are walking in faith and that's the most difficult part of faith because how can you stay encouraged when nothing encourages you in the physical? So we looked at the example of when you get um, an email from a company that you desire to work with and they say, we're inviting you for a test. When you, you see a letter for a test, there is a way you feel excited about it. That at least, I mean, if you have not been called for a test to write a test in a long time, you are excited that at least something is happening for you. So when that is happening, that's not faith. Then they call you for interview. The moment you see another email for interview, there's this excitement that bursts out. Like, wow, God is doing wonders. You can start singing God of Miracle now, my papa. You're excited. Because God is working. And so for you, that's the, um, the only way you can say that God is working for you. Then suddenly, it stops at the interview stage. And they said they will get back to you. And they never got back to you. And now you're checking your emails every day. You are sending them emails to say, sorry, you've not gotten back to me. And it's, you know, it's easier when you, see, when you see something that encourages you. It is harder. When nothing encourages you, you didn't write the test, you didn't go for an interview, but you just believed that you're going to get a job. So it says that when it produces, it will first produce what is called the blade, then the blade will produce the ear, then the full corn will come. When you see a blade as an agriculturist, and you tell yourself, I planted corn into the ground, the seed, and I'm seeing blade, it's not going to make any sense to you. If you see the stalk or you see the ear, you are telling yourself, is this what I wasted my effort to plant? And suddenly it says that immediately after that, that stalk or after that ear, the next thing that will come out of the ground is a full con. If you have fooled yourself in the process to say this is not what I planted and you walked away, you would cheat yourself out of destiny because you don't know how to stay in faith. So this morning I'm going to liken it up from that area and talk about a few things that can also help um, to bring about the results that we desire in the process of faith that every one of us we are engaged in in our lives 
and faith is really really something that is it's um if you understand it it's going to be fun if you don't understand it you are going to see it as something difficult to practice as a lifestyle as a christian so let's look at the place of words that we speak in the place of faith and let me first say this before i begin that that faith does not make things easy faith only makes things possible so there are two different things faith does not get things easy it doesn't make it easy it does not necessarily have to be easy if it's easy fine if it's not easy fine but the purpose of faith is not to make things easy the purpose of faith is to make things possible so it means that when you have a great mountain before you when you have a great a great thing ahead of you that you are looking at and you're trusting god you see something really huge something superhuman a bit paranormal beyond what you know what you know that your efforts can get or give to you so you see it and you know that this is beyond me this is not what i can achieve myself so where faith comes in is very simple that faith only helps you to know that that mountain that looks insurmountable is possible but he didn't say that your achievement of that thing is going to be easy so you get into a company as a graduate trainee and you are trusting god that you are i mean one day i spoke with a former a former director at, uh, at exxon mobile mrs osime you know and she she came into the into that organization as a ground staff she was an office assistant she came in she came in at the at the lowest level into that place then interestingly she met with the director at that time i think while passing on the corridor and asked her a question you know and said that where do you see yourself do you think you're going to be in this organization for a long time and where do you see yourself she said without knowing what she said from her heart without knowing the confidence that led her she said that i see myself on your seat and the woman was shocked and she says i like i like your words it is possible so for her to say that i'm going i see myself on that seat looking at where she is looking at where the other director is the woman said i like what you say trying to say that i like your faith faith made it possible that this thing can work then after you say that you get back to your daily routine then you begin to work out what you need to do on a daily basis. Probably for the next 20 years. I think it, it took her like 12, 13 years. For the next 12, 13, 15 years. For some 20 years. To work out what you saw by faith. So you will be deceiving yourself. When you are operating by faith. And you are, your works are not showing what you are doing. So I see myself become a director. If we see how you are negligent on the work, how you laze around on the work, how you are not meeting deadlines, how you are always giving excuses, but you are saying, I have faith that I will grow. I have faith that I will become this. And God is saying, no, show me your works and I'm going to tell you how, faith you're terrible, uh, how your faith is terrible. So there's something called the work of faith that you must understand. Faith does not get it easy it may not make it easy but faith makes it possible so if you track your lives and you see that the consequences around you they are all based on words we are all beings of consequences our fabrics are made to receive feedbacks of the energies around us and listen to this really well you are you are as good as the words that formed you you see, every nation is in the battle of words. The nation that gets angry with the order, fights the order, find out it's words that cost it. People who get sacked in organization, many times you find out that the words were involved. When people begin to wage war against themselves, you find out that war is involved. When you have an infection, you go to the hospital and the doctor wants to check what's going on in your body. One of the easiest ways to find out what's wrong with you is to check your tongue. If you have dysentery, they want to check your tongue. They want to see a few things around and say, oh, okay, I think there's an infection here. I think this is an infection here. I think that if something is wrong with your tongue, then it means that something is wrong with your life. So the doctors can say, we are going to prescribe something for you. Go use this particular antibiotics because your tongue is showing that things are not going on well. And so you are sick because your tongue is showing it that you are not going well. So it means that many times our lives can be tracked. 
as a feedback of the words that are around us. Christians, you say, I don't know, but I need your eyes. I am trusting the Holy Spirit to open your eyes to what I'm saying. We are all victims of words. We are in the battle of words. We rise by words. We go forward by words. You see, the devil is after your prayer life. Strongly. Because he knows that if he can get your tongue to be lazy, he will get your life to stand still. And the devil also knows that when he puts a process and you're going through trials, trials or, or crisis in life, it weakens your tongue. It weakens your ability to pray. It weakens your ability to be able to speak positive words in the midst of darkness. In the midst of things not making sense. It takes a lot and the devil knows how to attack you at that level. For how long are you going to be in that web of the devil? That you just don't understand that the devil tracks your tongue and your prayer life because he knows that's where your life start, stops. If you are a wise Christian, if you are a believer that wants to move forward in life, you must understand that my words are powerful. In fact, you know, the, 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 when the Bible says that let every believer hold on to the confession or profession of their faith, for he that promised is faithful. What that simply explains to us, I say hold on to your profession. That as a Christian, there's a profession that you have. And what are you professing? And the word profess, when you say somebody's a professor, there's something he's professing, there's something he's saying, there's something that is bringing out, that is bringing out as words in thesis, in writings, is professing things in the research so when it says hold on to the confession or profession of your faith it's saying that as a Christian if you came into the faith your profession is to speak words that's our profession so what are you doing in the faith when you are not speaking what are you doing in the faith all this casual Christianity executive Christianity man things are going wrong in your life strongly and deeply things are eating you deep every day and you don't know it's a simple reason closed tongues closed mouth say to yourself my tongue will not be closed say like you believe say my mouth is opened if you learn to speak the right words virtues will flow towards your direction there's no other signs around us then Someone said, Pastor, I've been saying it now. You're not saying it enough. You're not saying it consistently. You're not saying it with high intensity. You're not saying it consistently. So, so you believe that if you say something two weeks ago and you stopped saying it and you come again today and you say, I've been saying it for two weeks. You didn't say it for two weeks. You only said it once. You only said it once. What you were saying at the beginning of the year, are you still saying it? So they were reading confessions. I, you know, sometimes I ask myself, you know, you see, I, I'm, I'm not a magician. I'm not a herbalist. I, I'm a believer in God. So, the, the only way to get a result in this kingdom is what I'm teaching you. There's no other way to say, Pastor, cut me another soap. I don't have any other soap. I don't have any other thing. This is what I live by every day. This is what I stand by every day. My life is hinged on that principle. So when they make those confessions every Sunday, honestly, do you think that they are trying to while away service time? No. You see those confessions you read? They came out of a depth. They came out of a depth. That's what I mean, the breakthrough came. And that's the first gave me thanks. It doesn't even make any sense. Don't be a dead Christian. Be alive when it's time to talk. Be alive when it's time to speak the word. Be alive when it's time to pray. Be alive. Not only be alive when you're watching Big Brother. There's a kind of energy that walks around you. Energy every, and you have everywhere. A lot of energy. You are so excited. You are happy. You want to catch up. What's this one saying? What's that one saying? What's going on? What's going on there? You're excited. What is going to move your life forward looks boring to you. You're under attack. Honestly. 
See those guys you watch? In three months time, they are going to be done. They are going to be celebrities. You are still going to be a non-entity. And you know what? You've helped them to grow in life. Your words. Your excitement. Your commitment. Your claps. Your chats. Your Instagram post. Those good words. They're helping them to go forward. They are rising by words. When they bring out such events, like don't you know that those things rise? They rise by words. It's by your affirmation. You get into the office, you talk about it. You gist about it. And they don't want you to stop talking about them. So even when nothing is not happening, they, they organize a reunion for you. You must keep talking about them. They must be the people that you're talking about. Glory to God. Say, my life is moving forward. Say it again. Say, my life is moving forward. And for some people, it's not that they don't speak. Some of them speak, but they speak the wrong things. So some people speak the wrong things. Eve spoke the wrong thing. She lost the garden through the words. Vashti lost palace through the words. In fact, if you read Ecclesiastes 5, 6, do not say before an angel that is an error. Men lose inheritance via words. So some people are at the level of not speaking at all. Some are at the level of speaking, but they're speaking wrong things. Say, this country is a useless country. This country is a this. This country is that. So when you, when, you, when you curse the earth that you are in and you pray, is it not the same earth that will generate for you? You spend six hours in your prayer room and come out, you say one word, and the devil says, that's what I'm looking for. Everything you have said, it's been nullified. Let me teach you something. If you can give yourself one month a challenge and tell yourself that I will not speak any idle word, one month, I'm telling you, just give yourself that challenge, a one month free from idle words, you'll be shocked at what the purity of breath will produce in your life. The purity of breath. So let's get to what I want to teach this morning. Numbers chapter 20. And verse 2. You must learn to speak. There are many blessings hanging on the heads of believers. So many blessings hanging in the spirit. So many blessings. That the only thing you need to do is to open up the door of words to get those things. But believers will, 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 will prefer to beg. We love to beg for, be for bread. Hmm. When God positioned you to daily receive bread. Did you hear that? I said, did you hear that? God positioned you to daily receive bread. And not to beg for bread. He positions you. So those things are hanging around. And you just open up words. You open up words. You open up words. Hmm. So for my wife, we were having a conversation late night yesterday. And so my, my US, my, uh, my US visa, I think expired a, a while ago. So I was telling her, so I was telling myself that ah, I need to get, I need to get this visa. So, so I've been hearing a lot of gist that um, it's a bit difficult now. So if you have to, let me, you have to get like um, maybe November before you can sit for an interview or something, you know. And so we've been talking. I said I'm not traveling this year. So I tell I'm not, I'm not traveling. So one day I was speaking, I was, I was speaking a scripture in in, in Psalm chapter 18. So, I was, I was quoting that scripture. A wise person will write that scripture down. That's how to think. You don't listen to what a preacher is saying. You listen to what the preacher is not saying. That's how to listen to people. If, you, if I sit down to listen to people, I hear what they say. But there's something else I'm not hearing. I go to the top of my note and I write exactly. So, this scripture I just told you now can work wonders for you. But I will show you the verse. 
So, I was declaring that scripture. I remember I declared it for two weeks at my prayer corner, for two weeks. But what I was, when I was declaring that scripture, there was something else in my heart why I was declaring that scripture. So, I prayed it for two weeks. And um, I sealed that thing in the spirit by faith. And I left it. Then I moved on to other things of my life. I moved on to the other scriptures of my life. Because I will hardly ask God for ha having my needs met in the place of prayers. I don't do it. I've never prayed to a God to give me a car in my life. We've never agreed together in my family that God, this year you must supply us a car. We've never prayed it. It's not a prayer point. Because we, we're, we're too wise to understand how the kingdom works. We put our energy in the kingdom. We pray the kingdom. We go for the kingdom. Then things come to us. He said, pray it. There's somebody, a, a conversation just came in one day. And somebody was telling me about, ah, you see this trip that you don't want to go for? Because there's something I was supposed to go for. I said, I'm not coming. So the person said, ah, this trip you don't want to go for. Do you know that um, this trip can open up something for you? I said, the only thing that I want is that if this trip can open up a two to five years visa for me, which I know is impossible now. If you can open up a two to five years visa for me, I will come. As I said it, two weeks after, the person called me and said, it's possible. I said, you are kidding me. He said, it's possible. He said, just send me this, send me this, send me this, send me this. I will send that to you. This is how I'm going to work it. A professor in the uh, University of Atlanta will get this for you. I will just open up. I said, are you for real? He said, no. He said, you won't even need to stress yourself. Then God reminded me, he said, go back to this scripture. He said, see this scripture. He said, this scripture also produced this miracle. While I was praying something about the kingdom, and I was declaring about the kingdom, there was something I was seeing. Then God said, do you know that that thing you declared came from this thing? You must learn to be skillful in the use of the words. In the scriptures. That's why when somebody one day spoke to me and said, Sir, you were preaching this a verse and you quoted a verse and said this verse produced the company that I'm running. And I saw the company. The person has over a 60-man staff under him. And he said, I was the one that preached that scripture. Listen, and I don't have 60-man staff. I don't have 30-man staff. And he said, I'm the one that preached. I opened his eye. I said, show me that scripture again. You know why I said, show me? Because he saw something I didn't see. So I was the one that showed him. I said, come and show me again. Then he quoted the scripture. I said, show me exactly. What I, was, I was telling him, show. he didn't understand what I was saying. I said, show me. He said, show me exactly. He said, you said, I taught you this. I said, yes. I said, you worked on it. He said, yes. I said, show me. Till he now told me, sir, look at this thing. You repeated this thing twice. So you find out that even in the scriptures, nobody has an exclusive power of right over it. Anyone whosoever shall say. That means some people will say, some people will not say. But whosoever shall say unto this mountain, be thou removed. He said, it's going to happen exactly. It's going to happen exactly. Glory to God. He said, my life is moving forward. Oh God. He said, my life is moving forward. Say every day I'm making progress. Say every way I'm going forward. Say I have a headway. Say I had no what to do. Glory to God. And there's something about the spirit realm. The memory, the spirit realm has a memory. Whatever is written in your name stays there. Till you are able to open words for it. Till you are able to open words for it. How was Samson was able to fight all those guys that came against them? The Bible says he used what is called the jawbone of an ass. Jawbone. Numbers 20, verse 2. Let's read that scripture very fast. So, in, in medicine, the some years ago, they, they found out that the easiest way to be able to, to deal with cancer, and because cancer has been something that people don't know, have not learned, I think that they have not, um, because they don't know so much about the curse, so it makes it a bit difficult to find a cure for it. So, in advanced, in advanced nations, 
they discovered the power of what is called ultrasounds that's heavy heavy sounds ultrasounds that so they it's called an ultrasound code that when you bring so it's in a machine when you bring a cancer cell a cell a cancer cell close to that machine and they press the button the ultrasounds begin to come it says that the person or the cancer cell close to the equipment begins to vibrate is that the vibration stops but nothing has happened into the person is that when it vibrates to a particular level they come into the same frequency maybe two two five six hertz or something they come to the same frequency is that the moment they are vibrating at the same frequency he says something happens to the cancer cells he said it dies it dies so when he dies it says the person gets better you know what that means when you speak creation or destruction happens what are you speaking creation or destruction happens it's not difficult it is not difficult god is waiting for you to open up the world of words you open it up you have a challenge and you say are you looking for crusade that's how how, how how helpless we are in africa you are looking for a crusade you are looking for the next thing always thinking of external help what did the prophet say to, say to the woman he said you are indebted i can't give you money he said go borrow verses when you come back shut the door of your house enter into the battle of words shut the door and change things from your room do you know that you can change this right from your room? Right from your house. Right from your house. I've entered into some terrible mess. Terrible mess. I'll say I will not speak a word to anybody over this thing. I will speak in my room. I enter into my closet and I will build it up. It can take me two days. It can take me three days. It can take me five days. But I'm going to build it up. Glory to God. I said, glory to God. You can't be, can be a quiet Christian when it comes to words, speaking before God. You must be skillful at it. You must be skillful at it. How soon it shows up depends on the intensity that you say it. The issue is that Christians say it and they get, they get tired. When things of life, when the, the vicinity of life come around you, you just get tired. You get tired. Mature. Mature mature in the place of words mature in verse 2 there was no water for the congregation and they gathered themselves together against moses and against aaron let's move fast we're going to get to verse 8 and the people chored with moses and spoke saying would god that we had died when our brethren died before the lord let's move to a message version now they attacked Moses. We wish we had died when the rest of our brothers died before God. You see, those were words people were saying before, they, before, they, before God. That they wish they died when their brothers died. They wish they died. And they were talking carelessly. Verse 5. Verse 4 rather. Why did you haul this congregation of God out here into this wilderness to die? People and cattle alike. Like people like cattle. Verse 5. And why did you take us out of Egypt in the first place? Dragging us into this miserable country. I mean, their life was going forward. Moses was helping them to go forward. Guess what this guy said? This guy said that you are dragging our lives into a miserable country. No grain, no fig, no grapevine, no pomegranate, and now not even any water. Your life was moving forward and you are saying, no, we prefer where we are coming from. We prefer to suffer next verse so moses and aaron walked from the assembled congregation to the tent of the meeting they walked away from there and they threw themselves face down to the ground and they saw the glory of god they said these guys the pressures are too much they're cooking us left right center too much they said we are going to go face down and look unto god look unto god you're having series of miscarriages 
And it's happening every time. I traveled to, to Ilorin and somebody came to meet me. I said, Pastor, I thank God that you are in town. I said, what happened? He said, do you remember three years ago when you came, my wife had a miscarriage? I said, I remember. He said, two years ago, the same month, my wife had a miscarriage. He said, last year, my wife had a miscarriage. He said, a week before you came, my wife had a miscarriage. I said, how many? He said, four. I said, God. I said, your, my, your wife's mental state, she can't be fine. He said, Pastor, agree with me. I said, I'm not agreeing with you. I said, go and open up your face to God. And find what, I said, what I will do for you is that I will give you scriptures. I'll give you 10 scriptures. Go and open up the world of words and go to God and speak to him. I said, that will answer you. I said, come and agree with me. Come and agree with me. Yeah, but yes, I can agree with you. But some things just require the word. We are too lazy. We are looking for a man of God to just do it. A man of God to how sustainable are those miracles? How sustainable? How sustainable? You can get healed right now in the service under a corporate anointing. You can get home and still feel it back. How sustainable? Then God spoke to Moses. He put his face down to the ground. God spoke to him. He said, Take the staff. That's the rod in your hand. Assemble the community. You and your brother Aaron. Speak to that rock. What did he say? Talk to me. What did he say? I can't hear you. What did he say? Shout it again. Speak to that rock. Speak to that attack over your health. Speak to that rock. Oh, so the rock is so strong. It's immovable. It's unshakable. The rock is so much. I'm afraid. God said, don't speak to me. Speak to the rock. In the kingdom, we don't beg. We speak to the rock. You don't beg the rock. You speak to the rock. And because the rock has the capacity to respond to what you say. Do you know why the rock will respond? The bones in man was also from the same material as the rock. What is in you can confront what is ahead of you. You are enough. Somebody say, I'm enough. Come on, say it like him. Say, I'm enough. Say it one more time. Say, I'm enough. Speak to the rock. One day, Bishop Bessin, that was, I was going to have a crusade somewhere. So they got into the land. And the man walked up to him then in Benin and said to them, You are not going to have this crusade here. I said, Bishop said, You are joking. And he said, We won't have it. He said, If we, your God. Even your God, I mean, that infidel said, Even your God cannot come have this crusade here. And Archbishop said, You went too far. God is too much for you. I'm enough for you. He said, I'm enough for you. The next day, they landed at the crusade ground. The man showed up, went blind. Speak to that rock, speak to it. You've allowed the devil bully you too much, afraid of the devil scared of the devil he said speak to that rock he said oh god oh god why has this happened to me why has that happened to me he said speak to that rock can you put me that scripture please speak to the rock who told you only human beings hear the voice of god both animate and inanimate things they hear the voice of god glory to god have you heard the scripture where the bible said jesus spoke to the wind and he said the wind obeyed the wind obeyed so if wind can obey, I can command the wind from where I am to another country. Oh yes. And it will happen. I can agree with somebody in prayer. And I say in the name of the, I rebuke that foul spirit from your body. Anywhere you are on the earth, the wind can carry it. Because he spoke to the wind and the wind picked it. Not only rocks, but even winds hear the word of God. And interestingly, not just wind and rocks. Do you know that even bones hear the word of God? God said to Ezekiel in Ezekiel 37, at verse 1, he says, speak to the bones. Prophesy to the bones. Speak to the bones. He said, but these bones are dry. He said, but these bones are not making sense. He said, these bones are, are they're just, they're just some trouble. He said, no, you speak to the bones. He said, God, when I speak to the bone, if the bone of the ankle is in, is in, is in Abia, and the bone of the leg is in another city in Dakar, how can they find themselves and come into the right human beings and stand? Don't you think there's going to be a mistake. God says the word of God has no bound. There's no distance in the spirit. He that created all things says speak to the rock. And when he spoke to the bones, the Bible said it began to shake. Something will shake in
in your life this way. Oh, you don't believe it. Something is shaking in your life this way. Some things have been going lifeless. Some things have not been working. Some things have been far. Got your life bought. But in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, I command a shaking to begin to happen for you this week. In the name of Jesus whatever did not listen to you in the first few months of this year i commanded in the month of july that in the name of jesus there shall be rattling and there shall be shaking in the spirit in the name of jesus wow the thing began to shake as he was shaking the bible says that the bones began to look for themselves they began to do you know that even if you are looking for a life partner this thing works for it the person you want to marry can be in the U.S. And you are in Yaba. And he says, speak to the bones. The man has bones. You have bones. He says, speak to the bones. He said, there will be a shaking. When a shaking happens, something will happen. The person may come, just come for a job, come for a visitation, come to see a friend, just come to the mall. So, I mean, he said, there's going to be a shaking. And when a shaking happens, he said that the bones began to look for themselves. This week, something is going to look for you. Oh my, your, your mouth is still shut. I said something is going to move for you. In the name of Jesus. So the Bible explains that when they found themselves, meat and sign news began to come on it. The word of God does not just change your situation. It changes your life. What he said was speak to the bone. He didn't say speak to the meat. But the bones know that there can't be anything except there are meat. And the sinews came together. The flesh was formed. And the Bible says they ended up as champions in Israel. When you use your sound code, everything responds to it. I don't know how else to help you. But this is the best you need to know. That your life responds to words. Your life responds to words. Hmm. Isaiah 48 verse 7 as we pray. You know if I promise to give you. Let's assume there's a need in your life now. And you are looking. You need um, maybe a thousand dollars. And I promise you that I would give you a thousand dollars. You know, if I told you that I will give you a thousand dollars, every fiber of your bone, your tissue, your cell, your organ, we know that an information has changed in your body. I mean, but that is because if you if that money means a lot to you. Say no, one thousand dollars. When the, when somebody calls you on the phone and say, ah, how are you, um, so so person? How are you doing? I say I'm fine. Oh, say I'm very fine. God is good. God is dependable. God is reliable. I, you see, and you're not seeing the money, but yet you are rejoicing. Yet you are rejoicing. You see, what changed your mood was just an information. Yet you have not received the substance. Then I said I'm going to give it to you tomorrow. Then I call you by 9 a.m. tomorrow. When you saw my call, you know that what I'm asking for is your answer. And uh, I said, uh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Um, you know, as I said that, I'm sorry. You don't even know whether I want to say somebody died or something happened. Your emotions will change. If you're not, if you, so to some people, it can be running stomach. Something just goes wrong. You've not heard what the person wants to say to you. Something just goes wrong. And I say, actually, I'm sorry. I, I really want to give you this money. I really, in your mind, I say, can you just, just tell me exactly. I, I really want to give you this money. You say, I plan to give you this money. I promise. Can you, what exactly? He said, so this money is not available. I'm going to look for another way to send you the money when I don't know when. And I drop the call. You that you were excited yesterday, when you have not seen the money, you will also feel bitter. Even when the money didn't leave your hand, but you banked on it. It tells you how informations work, even in the spirit. Even in the spirit. That's why the devil is going to send you bad news. He's going to send you a few things. It just, just wants to change your system. He just wants to mess it up. He knows that if he gets you there, he's got in your life. 
Glory to God. This isn't a variation on the same old thing. This is new. Somebody say, this is new. Brand new. Something you would never guess or dream of. It's not something that you can dream of. It's what eyes have not seen. What ears have not heard. What has not entered into the heart of any man. That's what I'm about to do. It's something new. Glory to God. Somebody's listening to me right now. Something new is happening to the organs of your body. Oh yes. Oh yes. If there's a problem with your kidney, a problem with your liver, something new is happening to it right now. In the name of Jesus. Something you will never guess or dream of. When you hear this, you won't be able to say, I knew that all along. So if you, be, if you come into this thing and speak the word, it says something new is coming. Something new is coming. Give me the King James Version of this. Something is going to be created now. So if you came here sick, if there is any any cell in your body that has any issues if you have any organ in the body that has any issue something is going to be created because when you speak creation or destruction happens creation or destruction and that's why the church is the only hope for the body of christ because this is the only place creation happens outside the church is destruction this is the only place you hear the word of inspiration every day and i know that that's the reason why even a lot has not been destroyed on the earth today the church stands as the pillar of truth and a source of inspiration and hope to everybody how would how would the world have survived the covid without the churches how you know how many how many levels levels of depressions that happen to people you know what people had to go through at certain times what people had to enter into what they had to subject themselves into even if their will was not in it I suspect that God is going to create some things for you this week. He says that they are created when? Scream it. They are created what? They are created now. There are things that can be created now. Can you play something? Play it off now. There are things that can be created now. bad organs in the body bad wombs bad issues wrong stuff god says it can be created now even the job where there's no vacancy it can be created now <laughs> ah! glory to god is it and not from the beginning do you see that not from the beginning it can be created now now somebody say now. now so release your faith release your faith it can be created now not from the beginning he said oh i thought god created all things at the beginning he said i created you know what but i said you will continue the creation with your words you are co-creators that's why we are co-creators why are we co-creators because we speak we have the same spirit like him we speak to we believe therefore we speak we speak anybody who can speak is a creator anybody who can speak is a creator and that's why i will never agree with any idle world around me in my house there's nothing called it is finished they always say we have to buy it can never finish it does not finish it will never finish i am that i am that careful with words i say ah, pastor now take it easy now they're not just trying to tell you that food has finished it cannot finish it cannot finish and it has never finished it has never finished we just have to buy amen, amen. we just have to buy i don't lack anything i just acquire it i don't lack it i'll never tell myself god why has my life turned like this why is this is beloved befalling me no i won't say that i won't say that I won't say that. 
I just go in thanksgiving before him, lift up my hands and release words. Release words. All I just need to remember is a scripture that meets my needs. So we need to buy this. Thanks be to God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has given us all blessings and spiritual. Hallelujah. When you open up that kind of thing, somebody in another state can hear that message and say, Pastor, the Lord just told me to send you this money. You know how many alerts I get without a name? Without a name. Your shocklation of something. And I said, God, how do I respond to this thing? I'm not sure my wife is, has ever heard this story. I said, Lord, how do I respond to this thing? God said, this is what I wanted to do. I wanted to sow a seed of 100,000 every month to this particular person. All through the year. I said, but God, I've sown seeds. You know what I do when I start my year, December and January? I said, God, you know. But God said, there's something I, that you saw. This is how to respond to it. He said, don't even send it as money. Send it as credit, as like recharge card, credit. I said, God, is too much for one person every month. He said, send it. Then it sounded stupid. I think the first one I wanted to do, I didn't even know how to do it. How to even, I, can, I just called my staff. I said, can you help me do this sending of this thing? Send that. And I did, I did, I did, I did, I did, I did. What I saw never came to pass. It never came to pass. When God shows you something in the spirit, listen, it's because it can be changed. That's why he showed you. If not, if it won't be changed, there's no point showing you because it will happen anyway. It's going to happen anyway. I want you to do a seed. If you can afford it this month, I won't call a price or anything for you. I'll never put you under pressure. But I want you to sow a seed. I see something locked up. I see something locked up. If you're online, you can do the same. And I want, if you can, do it this week. But make sure it doesn't go beyond a month. I don't know what is coming, but that's somebody's gateway to get off. Oshas, can you pass the papers for them immediately now? Thank you. And trust God for it. Some of you have never done this in your life. I'm not buying a new generator. There's nothing the church is trying to do. We are not trying to run any project. Honestly. There's nothing. Thank you, Lord. Creator of the universe, what can't you do? What can't you do, Jesus? Creator of the universe, what can't you do? What can't you do, Jesus? The name of every other name, what can't you do? What can't you do, Jesus? Name upon every other name, what can't you change? What can't you change, Jesus? I agree with you. Lift up your hands, everybody. It says, and Jericho was locked up, was straightly locked up. The length of what locked up Jericho was the same as the breath. He said, people could not go out and people could not go in. He said, and the Lord said unto his servant, tell them to go around. Tell them to go around. And they went around as he said. And the Bible explained that Jericho opened up for them. This morning, I address and I want your amen to be loud. If there's a sacrifice in your hand, don't waste it. You must put fire on it. This prayer is much more important than the sacrifice in your hand. But I had to put you on the altar to do that this morning. 
it will cost you some of you is costing you a salary costing you something but make sure that what you are giving cost you don't give god what does not cost you don't give him what is comfortable with you i beg you this is strange there's something that is coming there's something that is coming that god needs to lift you above it i said from pastor maya we're speaking at a lorry and while we're talking i said that the best thing leaders i said leaders the best thing believers can do in the times that we are in is to rear sacrifices we're talking deep about some things going on on the earth i said the best thing is to rear sacrifices you will lose any loved one i agree with you whatever shuts men up and gives them no option but to death i declare today that today in the name of the lord that thing that strictly shuts up men and their destiny i pray that you are lifted above those things in the name of jesus your spouses your family your children they are lifted above those things in the name of jesus today i negotiate every recurring attack some of you listening to me you've been having recurring attacks in the name of the lord i negotiate that something new breaks out and every evil prophecy they are shut out of your destiny in the name of jesus we rebuke death from this house you're not saying amen We rebuke the spirit of death from your homes. We rebuke that darkness from your loved ones. So you need to say amen. Don't say because you've given God an offering, it will do it. Listen to me. Listen to me. When you have a sacrifice and there's no fire on it, it's a waste of sacrifice. I won't lead you to what is wrong. I won't lead you to what is wrong. Whatever is shutting the destinies of people down this season, I declare that it shall be lifted away from your sight. In the name of Jesus, there shall be no bloodshed around you. Anyone appointed unto death, we cancel it. In the name of Jesus, you're going out and you're coming in, they shall remain blessed. You will abide of the Almighty God. God will continue to be your defense. In the name of Jesus. No strange sickness. No strange disease will take your life. I've seen people who had boil. Just a little boy and the person died. Just a little thing in the body. The, person, the devil capitalized on it and took it away. Today I declare that the mark of Christ is placed on you placed on your children placed on your loved ones those here those not here we place that mark on them and we declare let no man trouble you let no woman trouble you let no demon trouble you every territorial power around where you live that consumes men we declare that you are lifted above those powers they will jump and pass your territory in the name of jesus father we give you glory and we give you praise blessed be the name of the lord in the name of jesus christ we have prayed have you been blessed this morning put your hands together for the lord can you celebrate him with a voice of joy hallelujah you may please be seated you drop the papers in alongside your offering basket thank you